Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another Pipedrive training video. In this video, I want to talk you through a checklist for how to correctly onboard a new salesperson to Pipedrive. So if you've hired a new salesperson, if this is their first time using Pipedrive, even if it's not their first time using Pipedrive, it's still worth running through this checklist to make sure you are onboarding them to your sales workflow in the correct way. If you have any questions about anything in this video, please leave me a comment below. And if you do want one-on-one -on -one support with setting up or optimizing your Pipedrive account, automating and connecting Pipedrive with other tools and services that you use, or for things like sales training and onboarding new employees, then definitely check out the link in the description below to learn more about my Pipedrive consulting options. So let's get into this video. And the first thing you're going to want to do is to review the permissions and visibility settings in your account. Uh, so where we do that is under the company settings. If you go to manage users, this is where you can send the invite to your uh, salesperson. Now, before you do that, I would check the visibility, the permission sets and the visibility groups. So permission sets are what do regular users, you've got your admins, but what do regular users, which is probably what you're going to invite them in as, what do those people have permission to do? And so on the right hand side here, you can see a list of permissions uh, with, that you can toggle on or off, depending on whether you want to give that person access, uh, the ability to do those things. So here I have a salesperson, Warwick Palm. At the moment, he has the ability to change the visibility of items. That means he can take a contact or a deal and he can toggle the visibility to make it private to himself uh, or visible to other people in the team. Um, just to run down, I won't go through all of these, but just to run down some important ones, I would um, look at exporting data. That's one that I have known clients to run into issues with is maybe they have a salesperson that hasn't ended on the best terms. They've exported data from their account. There could be some concerns there around data privacy. So you definitely want to think about that. Do you want to give them the ability to delete deals and activities? Um, uh, usually you do because you want people to be able to keep their accounts clean. Um, do you want to give people access to see different statistics, company statistics, other users? Uh, do you want to let people merge information like duplicate deals, duplicate people? Again, that stuff is usually okay. Sharing filters, editing filters is usually fine. Editing deals won and lost date is one to be careful with. Uh, depending on how much you trust your sales team, I have worked with clients who have had salespeople do some sneaky little things. And uh, what some people have done is take the deal, the date that a deal was won and change that to make their uh, sales for a particular time period look really good. So you might want to restrict that. Do you want to give people access to use the API and connect Pipedrive with other systems and tools that you use? That's probably one that I would turn off and you can be in charge of connecting Pipedrive yourself. Um, editing, adding, editing and deleting custom fields, I would keep all of that turned off because I think it's better that you or you know whoever's in charge of Pipedrive, your admin, um, should kind of keep that under their belt. I wouldn't let people edit or change custom fields because I have known teams to run into issues where things have been deleted by mistake. Um, create Creating workflows is a good one to give people the option to create automations and things like that. So that's a, that's a bit of a rundown of the permissions. And then you've got visibility groups. So you can set up how much do we want people to see. And so you can set up groups like I've got uh, the sales reps could all be in one group. And then the support team like admin staff could be in a subgroup of that team. And what you can do for each group, uh, what each sales uh, team or each type of employee is you can set up what can these people see? So a lot of times, uh, because of competition between sales reps, you might want to set up visibility so only the owner of a deal can see that deal. So this helps you to avoid a situation where other sales reps poach or steal one another's contacts or deals. So usually, I've, I work with a lot of clients where they say, you know, each person can only see their deals. Maybe with people and organizations, that could be visible to the entire company. That's probably worth doing so that uh, everyone can share the contacts and the organizations. You're gonna have to have some conversations about how you manage that so multiple people don't reach out to the same contact at once, but we don't want lots of duplicates being created. So sharing the database is quite good, but then you could keep deals visible to only the owner of the company. 
So that's the first thing I would do is look at your permissions and your visibility and just check that everything's set up correctly before you invite in your new salesperson. I think from there, it's pretty safe to then go ahead and invite them in. Uh, you'll see an invite button. This is just my demo account, so I actually can't show you here, but there is an invite button normally here. So you can send an email and invite them in. What I would then have them do is, and you can do this with them, sit with them, is go to their personal preferences and run down some of these preferences here with them. So check that they've got their time zones and currencies and things set up correctly. I would have them connect their email account, so their Google or Microsoft or you know other IMAP account, get that connected so they can send emails through Pipedrive. If you want, you can have them um, connect to sync contacts to their Google or Microsoft account. You can connect their calendar so that activities can sync to their calendar. And you might wanna connect their Google Drive or OneDrive account so that they can set up cloud storage when files are attached to deals as well. Um, so yeah, I would just review those personal preferences with them, help them make all those connections and get everything set up so they can really hit the ground running when they start using Pipedrive. The next thing I would do is during a bit of a training session, talk through your sales workflow with them. So explain to them, and this might even, let's go back to the leads inbox. You might start here in the leads inbox if this is a feature that you use. Explain how you get your leads, whether that's from your website or from any of the lead booster features like the live chat or web forms. Explain where your leads come from and the fact that they arrive in here into your lead inbox. You wanna then explain the best practices around keeping good uh, notes, keeping a summary of the deal on here, filling in any custom fields that you have, explain what fields are important, um, how to keep good notes, and what your expectations are in terms of good data management and data storage in Pipedrive. You'll then want to show them how to convert an, a lead into a deal and talk them through your key sales stages. So when they would move a deal to each stage and talk them through the requirements of each stage as well. So when we get to, let's say, proposal sent down here, what are your expectations? How often should people be following up? Do you follow up in person, on the phone, with an email? Just kind of run through the entire process with them, not just how to use Pipedrive, but how does your actual sales flow go? And a good way to do this is creating a, an example deal. So I would have them click up here, create a new deal. You might just want to have them put their own name in here just as an example, but then just with that demo example deal, make them move it through each stage, have them create a few sample activities, have them fill out some of the custom fields on your deal so they can familiar familiarize themselves with all of that information as well. During this stage, I would also show them some of the key features of Pipedrive, like where they can add notes, explain how they can create activities for assigning when to follow up and all the important sales activities that you've created and show them some of the features like the calling integration, if you have that, the email integration, and this is where you can show them how to use things like uh, templates to easily follow up with people. Show them if you use any smart docs for things like contracts, quotes, proposals, how they would generate those in here, or if you're using the invoicing capabilities of Pipedrive, show them how they can use all these different key features as well. From there, I think a really useful thing to do is to show them some reporting options. And uh, I think this is showing them how they can track their own progress and as well how you're going to be tracking their progress is a really useful way to help the, uh, encourage them to use Pipedrive properly. So you can show them how to create a few reports if they want to create reports to track their performance or conversion, or maybe they, you want to um, have them track activities like how many meetings they've scheduled or proposals they've sent. Um, walk them through a couple of the reports either that they can create or that you're going to be using to hold them accountable. I think showing them where the data is reported and how they can see that is a really useful way to um, encourage them to use Pipedrive properly. And I think a really good philosophy to adopt is if it's not in Pipedrive, it didn't happen. So it, kind of instilling that philosophy means that they're gonna be logging activities correctly, updating their deals at the right time, marking them as won and lost, and that's gonna ensure that data is recorded accurately. So I'd show them some reports, and that would be a really good time as well to create any goals. So if you are going to be tracking your salesperson's performance either by the amount of revenue that they've won or activities completed, that would be a really good time to set up a goal. So here's an example goal. Paul here has a goal to hit $5,000 of sales per month, uh, or I've got a revenue forecast goal here. So you could create goals for their sales targets and, and, and show them exactly how you're gonna be tracking their performance here in Pipedrive. 
And then the final thing I would do would be to maybe assign them some open leads, give them some leads that they can start cold calling or working on, uh, obviously, if it's appropriate for your business. So either here from the lead inbox, I can click on the lead and I can change the owner here to their name, or maybe I do that from the deal screen. I might um, change the owner up here to the new salesperson and give them some new leads that they can start working on. So have a look in the description below to see a summary of that checklist that I just walked through. Um, obviously feel free to customize that for your business. Each business, each sales workflow is slightly different. Um, those would be kind of the key things that I would walk through, but feel free to customize that um, for your own workflow. If you have any questions about the best way to onboard people, if you need help with training, then definitely check out the link in the description below to learn more about my consulting options. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.